Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. A DeLorean, and what a spectacular example, Terry. Mm. Yes, this is an 8,000 mile DeLorean we purchased in the States. A uh, beautiful example. It's almost like new. It is like new, mm. and no wonder mm. now with that sort of mileage on it, I yeah. understand yeah. why I was just... <laughs> yeah. it's, you won't, it like you a magnet. Yeah. There's not a lot of them around, but uh, this would be one that's an example of how they came out originally. Incredible story too, with John DeLorean being quite high up in GM, deciding to go out and start on his own and build his own car. That's right. This car is quite different. He wanted to obviously create something a little bit sporty and a little bit different with a stainless steel body. I can't quite understand because uh, John DeLorean was a very tall chap. I even have trouble getting in and out. I wonder how he did. Well, it seems to me that you might have to be about the height of Michael J. Fox to be able to fit into one of these cars. <laughs> or maybe him and I. <laughs> <laughs> And they even manufactured them in Ireland, I've been yeah, told as well. Yeah. The, the Irish government gave them uh, some support some yes, and exactly. he, he took the whole operation over there and it was, yeah. it was quite a big deal, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it was a fairly impressive story to get a vehicle off the ground so different to uh, most of them out there. And they utilised a, a Renault V6 too, I'm told. And I'm surprised they didn't go down the V8 path, but maybe they were looking for a nice, compact, lightweight yeah, engine. Yeah, I think the, the weight was a factor in it because the stainless steel body is reasonably heavy. And quite an iconic car too, made famous by the movie Back to the Future as well. Mm. I mean, who doesn't know what a DeLorean is? Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. an amazing bit <laughs> that, of history, isn't it? <laughs> that movie sort of travelled a long way with people's uh, getting to understand the DeLorean. Definitely. Yeah, the history of it. Yeah. Mm. This to me looks like a car that may be reminiscent of the early Auto Union Grand Prix cars. Is it a replica? Uh, yes, Malcolm Osler, who used to be the Jaguar Works team uh, manager. Very talented man. He built it, designed it and built it himself. It's a Jaguar V12. Malcolm had it for sale at one of the mall hill climbs with a little sign there for sale. And I said, Malcolm, if it had dual wheels, I'd be interested. Like the and he said, in the day. Yeah. And because we see footage of the hill climbs in, the, in Germany and uh, Europe with the dual wheels to get traction because the tyres, they didn't have much surface area. They've usually got smoke coming off you them do. too. Well, <laughs> we can do that. Um, we took it to Geelong Sprints a couple of years ago and she smoked up four wheels. You had to control that because you want to do a reasonably good time. Yes, yeah, I'm not sure what no, time. You want to get, you want to so Maybe we did, did pretty good time, yeah, a bit of both. <laughs> and I see you've got quite a bit of memorabilia too. The packaging design and everything else because of our activities and what we do as in a business, uh, design is everything. It's all to be presented in such a way to inspire the person to take interest in it. So it just, just blows me away that the history of all of that is often lost and to do what justice for that, we've displayed it all as best we can. Uh, I've been to many auctions and many sales. Uh, a lot of people come to me with product that, uh, or packaging that we may be interested in. And I've noticed that you've got some vehicles here that belong to some very famous people from years gone by. Yes, uh, 56 Roller, Gregory Peck and Ava Gardner were starring in that movie on the beach. The 77 Lincoln, Ford Lincoln, beautifully maintained car owned by Paul Newman. There's a nice blue Cadillac, it was owned by Betty Davis. She had it right up to her passing in 1988 or 9, I think it was. We still have some of the registration papers with her signature on them. We all know the song about you know, Betty Davis' eyes. I think she bought the car because of the colour that matched her eyes. Maybe that's a long stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, what do we have here? It's an 1886 Benz replica. Really? The replica yeah, of it's, Carl it's, Benz's first yes, motor vehicle? Yes, Mercedes, Daimler, Daimler, Mercedes. Um, decided in 1986 to build 100 replicas of the original car to commemorate 125th year after the first one was built. Wow, and it's an exact replica? Exact replica, everything the same. There's only one thing different. It's got a modern battery for the electric. So effectively, the real vehicle back in the day, in the 1800s, was the first motor vehicle, is that correct? Yes, first petrol-driven motor vehicle. 
Amazing, isn't Amazing. it? Amazing. Yeah, you can have a look at the spark plugs and things there that we take for granted today. He had to do all that to get this thing running as a mobile unit. I mean, really, steam. it was an era of steam back then, yes, wasn't it? it was all steam. Yeah, yeah. yep. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, it all started with a horse and cart. This was a way of doing it without a horse. The car where it all started for Henry Ford, the T yes. model. Yep. We talk about Carl Benz. Here's Henry's uh, attempt, which wasn't a bad attempt either, you know, to, to manufacture the number of cars he did over the period of time the T model lasted was. I don't think it's ever been beaten, has it? I oh, think Volkswagen might have beaten it. I'll tell you, the, numbers. To, to run even one model, I know it was the mm. first model, but to run one model for all those years mm. from day one is an incredible feat, yeah. but it was obviously yeah. working for him, so yeah. why would well, he continue? Well, he, he was renowned for not wanting to change a thing. He stuck with mechanical brakes right up till 1936, seven, whatever it was. So he took a while to make himself adjust to you know, evolving into a new, <laughs> new way of doing things. I mean, Henry Ford was a very innovative fellow throughout yeah. the years, and he was well amongst all of the engineering design that was actually going yeah. on through that period. But I'm told that he wanted to build the people's car, mm -hmm. where some of the executives that were involved with the company were sort of arguing we should build a luxury model. He wanted mm -hmm. the people's car, mm -hmm. and he worked on volume, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, he made it so that it was affordable for the average person. So that everyone can virtually own exactly. a car. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Henry was really the innovator, and uh, in respect to being the first one to introduce uh, a production line in manufacturing vehicles, they pumped yeah. them out yeah. like sausages, didn't they? They certainly <laughs> did. Yeah. And the power plant in these T models quite an interesting little engine, aren't they? I think they're about 18 brake horsepower and about 2100 cc or something like that. So <laughs> there wasn't a lot of um, developing horsepower in them, but they just plugged along and got you there. I've heard stories in the early days where Henry was actually running engines in his kitchen and his wife was helping him fuel the engines <laughs> at the home. He was a real innovator and mm. a real inventor, yeah. you know, back in the very early days before he started his motor yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where it all begins, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. So Terry, I believe we're standing next to a 36 cord. Yes. This was originally sold into India as a right-hand drive, very few built. It was sold to one of the richest men in the world at the time, well-known Maharaja. The cord is a spectacular looking vehicle too. They're really innovative for their time, aren't they? Yes, they were quite often described as a rolling sculpture when they were first seen on the road in 1936, a beautiful being design car. Tell us about the drivetrain in the car. Front wheel drive, it's a four speed pre-selector and it's a V8 Lycomi, uh, quite a reasonably high performance motor for a side valve. It's 125 brake horsepower, unsupercharged. Supercharged is about 195 brake horsepower. It's pretty good power yeah, pretty for Pretty good day. power for it, say, and plenty of torque. Oh, they would have had massive, yeah, torque. massive torque. And it cruises along, sitting on about 2,000 RPM at about 65 mile an hour. Wow, so they had tall gearing. Yes, it was almost like the fourth was an overdrive. Okay, yeah. yeah, wow. There's a supercharged model, which is the uh, Eleanor Blue Sportsman here. The vehicle was purportedly owned by George Putnam, who was the husband of Amelia Earhart, the aviator. She was very involved with Cord in many ways. She loved the Cord design. She actually took uh, Eleanor Roosevelt up on uh, teaching her how to fly. The colour is called Eleanor Blue, commemorating Eleanor Roosevelt's the relationship there. Terry, this vehicle looks absolutely spectacular. What do we have here? This is an L29 Cord, uh, the first Cord built named after Eric Loban Cord, who brought him to Auburn in about 1921, or introduced there as a salesman to try and help the sales. He took over the company after uh, Wrigley's uh, sold some shares to him. We're talking or, Wrigley's chewing gum? Yes, Wrigley's chewing gum. Wow, that's an interesting um, history. But this is a classic example of uh, innovation again. Front wheel drive, inboard brakes, the engine's an, again a Lycoming engine, a straight eight, plenty of torque. Cord was known for his sort of dressing up of vehicles for that time, that's how they stimulated their sales. 
by uh, making cars look a little bit more attractive. Those that see it pretty much fall in love with it. I feel the same way. <laughs> That's why I wanted to talk about it. It looks beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next episode where we drive Terry's incredibly rare 1948 Tucker Torpedo. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell because there's a lot more content coming your way.